In this video we're going to learn how to read in a CSV file and place it in our QTable widget. We're also going to use a little trick not to call the cell change value um, when we don't want it. Okay so this is the file that we had in the um, last program and all we're going to do is change it to do what we want. So the first thing I want to do is have access to the operating system and um, access to the CSV and module. I also want the Q file dialog. Um, I want to get rid of this because that was just there so that we could demonstrate an idea. And then what I want to do is I want to call the open sh um, sheet function, which I've not written yet um, in here. I could call it what I want, but I'm going to call mine open sheet. And what that's going to do is um, basically open a CSV file. So let's go back here and let's define that open sheet function. Okay, so um, the first thing I want to do is have is actually use the QFile dialog to get that sheet. So what we got here, I'm going to call it path QFile dialog self. Um, I could call it what I want. I think I'll call it open CSV because that's all we're going to get. It's going to go to the home directory and get it and then can it I want it to filter so it only shows me CSV files. Now remember this comes as a tuple and I want to say if path zero, the first one's the file name, if that's not equal to an empty string, that means it must have found a file, can I do um, the things I um, want to do? So the first thing we've got is um, with that file where I've got new lines um, just coming in line by line, um, can I open them as a CSV file? I mean, I can call, I've called it that. I mean, I call that what I like it to be. And then what I want to do is I want to set within our um, our table, I want to set the number of rows and columns. Now remember, it's starting from scratch. So I'm going to set the row count to zero, so it'll have zero height. And then just because we decide to do it 10 here, you don't have to, I could set this to zero as well. I'm going to set the column count to 10, so it's the same. Um, the next thing I want to do is um, basically open the file. I know it's a CSV file, so I'm going to use CSV reader. And the most important ones here, the delimiter, can I have that as a comma? So it's com obviously it is comma separated. If I want to save my things differently, then maybe I would do that differently. And if you were to use Excel, you can pick what it is within a dialog box. We could do the same thing. Maybe we'll do that in a later video. And then for the um, data, which I want to call row data, because we'll be reading it in um, a row at a time. For the row data um, in my file, what I want to do is I want row, this is an interesting one this, I want it to equal self um, row count. Now that basically means it's going to count the number of rows and then can we set and then can we set this. Now remember it will count the number of rows, but we count for zero, so effectively this value is going to be one more. And because of that, that enables us to do self dot insert um, a row at that position. And the great thing is that it means we're not going to be writing on top of what we've done already. Now what I want to do is, I'm just going to put these next two lines in. I want to say, okay, if the, this is the length, the number of pieces of paper, if it's greater than 10, and don't forget we only made it 10 wide, um, if it's greater than 10, because we make it to an appropriate width, if it's less than 10, then leave it. We want, we, I've decided we want a minimum of 10. We could set that how we want. Then what we want to do, I'm just going to copy this again. I want to say, whoops, that's garbage. Let's just um, and say, okay, for um, this column, we basically we're going to go over the data. This is going to take the position. This is going to take the stuff that's there. I mean, you can call it what you want. I'd kind of call it stuff because I don't know whether it's a string, an integer, or what. Um, can we um, basically call the zeroth one 
where they take its stuff, the second one, and so on. So it'll make more sense on the next line. So what I do is I say um, item, call it what I want, and I want this item thing to be a Q table widget, and I want it to be whoops, I don't want it to be that. I want it to be whatever the stuff is. So the stuff effectively I want to put in a um, a Q widget item. And then self, I don't want to set item. Now set item is there to just, and we've used it before, where we can put stuff, um, stuff appropriately. I can put stuff at the right position um, that I want to. So I want to put it at row, and obviously the row is going to be, we've set that already, and I want it to be column. Now column is going to be the, is equal to, if it's the first thing, column equals zero because we've enumerated over there and it will put it at position zero and I want to take items so we're pretty much there now it took me quite a while to get this work when I was trying it earlier because um, I didn't realize that CSV file that I'd made earlier was empty so this didn't actually work and uh, anyway let's run this now and we've got our dialog saying open CSV because that's what we called it and let's open the file and there it is everything looks great apart from we've got all these errors going on and that's because every time we put a value in we're changing a cell so it calls this here and we don't want it to so um, I've got a little trick I don't know if it's the best way of doing it it's just my way of doing it if someone's um, got something better then um, you know please comment and tell me so I'm going to call this other one set um, check for change and we're going to call that true. So I'm saying I'm quite happy to let you check the change. And here I'm going to say self dot check for change equal false. Don't want you doing it anymore. And um, the whole time you're in this function. So we're about to come out of the function here. So here I'm going to say check for change and let that equal true. Let them do it again. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go here and we're going to say if. Um, self dot check for change so if it's true do this stuff and all we've got to do here is indent that and now if we run it we should get exactly the same thing let's extend that there we go but look here we've got no errors I hope you enjoyed the video if you did think about subscribing I've included a link to the code that I've used in the video below in the description. Stay in infield with Winfield.